will be an actuator that has antennas laying down and it'll lift up. And I don't really need antennas, but I want another <laughs> remote control thing. First test. Beautiful. I got 45. 45 the panels are going to come off. They're 25 pounds a piece. And then the whole rack is less than 50 pounds. So it's going to take two people and go up on ladders, put it on. The brackets are already up there. I could have just mounted these straight to the rack in one day, but I really wanted this hole. And it's going to be remote control. Okay, there's this 80-20 framing, and that comes in 72-inch lengths, and then I chop it. I have a special chop saw to chop that, and then I drill it, and I have a tapper. And then there's two actuators right here. These are 8-inch, 12-volt linear actuators. And, and then, of course, the panels are sort of made to fit this frame. These are 200 watt panels, I believe. The frame is made to fit the panels. Yeah. What did I say? The panels are made to fit the frame. Well, they're made, they match the frame. They're, they're There's probably $100 worth of just button head cap screws and stainless washers and hinges. And uh, I had to make these brackets down here. See this right here? Oh, See that plate right there? I had to make that and you, you know here's a, a here's a drawing for that plate and it's made out of two inch by eighth inch aluminum and so I wired up yesterday I wired up this little Y adapter see that so that's one cable coming in splitting into two and the reason I didn't wire them together is I want to be able to disconnect this and replace an actuator without cutting and soldering on the roof. So this just disconnects. So how do you keep everything waterproof? Is that part inside? No, it'll get it'll get wet on the outside. Uh, I haven't decided if I'm gonna cover it or just you know, all this gets exposed to water. Does eighty twenty do well with water? Yeah, it's aluminum. I mean it will corrode a little bit and the fasteners will eventually corrode, especially the bat black screws which i could change to stainless but that'd be like i mean it's probably fifty dollars worth of stainless screws i mean they have a plating on them that's what the black is they're steel underneath and they have a black plating so the answer is yeah it's the weather is going to take its toll on it if you look back behind here behind the panels can you see that i've built an 80 20 frame underneath mm -hmm. and the panel goes around that. So actually without this panel on here, this whole assembly still works. And I didn't want to rely on the panel for any mechanical. So uh, this frame underneath is what takes all the stresses. See the big bolt here? That's mm -hmm. a, a five inch quarter 20 bolt with a stainless lock nut on it. Okay. This whole thing weighs about 100 pounds. So 25 pounds for each solar panel and then about 50 pounds for all the rest of the stuff. But here's the here's this bracket that I made. And there's some modification to the actuator there. Well, you have to have the right tie wrap or UV and stuff will definitely deteriorate it. So this is the custom bracket that I made. The key to this is there's quite a bit more that goes into this than you would think. You need to be able to adjust this actuator so that when it's fully down, that the panel is fully down. And you don't know that exact number until you build it. And so if you loosen this up, this whole bracket slides on here. So you can find the exact right. Position. So I can go all the way down. I can clamp it down and then tighten that. And I know my down is at zero. And so otherwise I could have just put a bolt if I knew exactly within 50 thousandths where to put a bolt. I could do that. I could just drill a hole through here and it could just have a bolt that went straight through. 
But if you were to do this again, you would know that. Yeah, it's, so it's 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 too wiggly. I think uh, there's too many other tolerances that build up. This really one end of this needs to be adjustable, okay. and this end is fixed. And notice what I used for spacers here; it worked out perfectly. I used a fuel line, fuel line cut. Let's use quarter inch fuel line. Yeah, I've got to use my expensive degree for something. <laughs> Actually, I'm an undocumented engineer. <laughs> so, but you've got a lot of shaded space here, and that's a problem because. Okay, that's the front because if they're ever up and wind hits, then. But I have a uh, limit switch I put down here so that if the ignition is on and this switch is on, I get a beeping that says, no, you can't drive because the panels are up. <laughs> But the air conditioner so is right here, okay, with about five inches space. And then here will be an actuator that has antennas laying down, and it'll lift up. And I don't really need antennas, but I want another <laughs> remote control thing. And then over here will be an arm that goes out and over behind the air conditioner, and it will lift up, and it will have a 360 camera on it. So Think I've Mad got Max. A, a giant uh, junction box that's about this big, I'll show you in the garage, it has all the ports in it. Instead of all these little bitty glands that people use, you don't have access to, I'm going to bolt a big junction box on the roof. It's really expensive. And it's, yeah, you know, 20 or 30 bucks for both of it. And so, anyway, do you want some glands? <laughs> have some glands! <laughs> glands for everybody!